Next we'll move on to the workshop, the design build studio. In my case I've gone through three workshops. This is my third workshop. I've been in this workshop for uh, almost two decades now <laughs> and it's not quite the same as when I began. I, it's a little busier now but I still have designed it with a lot of uh, open space or clear space around uh, both workbenches and some machinery. It's a two-level workshop and the original intent was to have machinery in the lower level with dust collection and uh, the veneer press. The upper part was to be a hand tool uh, workshop and that's still the case today, much more so today actually than it was in the past. So and I'll, uh, I'll start to describe the, the ideal workshop and workflow and what you should strive for in your own workshop. This is one of my uh, workbenches. I have two uh, similar workbenches to this. I have a total of four workbenches in the upper part, the hand tool workshop. And if you notice, the workbench itself is away from the, uh, from the wall. And this is something I, uh, I advocate, having the workbench away from the wall so you can work on all four sides. These workbenches are uh, designed to, for somebody or two people to work with at the same time or work around it. They're symmetrically designed with similar uh, features on both sides, the bench holes and one side typically has a face vise and there's an end vise that the bench I'm, the workbench I'm standing in front of is exactly the same as the one in the uh, that you can see. So by working by having uh, space around it you can actually double the uh, the uh, productivity of, of a typical workbench. Had it been placed against the wall you would be limited to the uh, front part of the uh, the workbench, the part that's actually where you're standing in front of. The back part typically becomes the storage part with the tool well. So from experience and uh, talking to uh, many many other woodworkers over the, uh, the past decades, this is the uh, this is what happens with a workbench when it's placed against the wall. It's more convenient sometimes if you don't have much space but there's a huge disadvantage to having it against the wall. I do have two other workbenches. They're my former smaller workbenches and they're against walls now, but I don't use them as much any, anywhere near the amount that I use these workbenches. This is the, uh, in the image, this is the, uh, the workbench I'm currently standing in front of. And this is, like, it's a, you notice it's against the wall. It's about a few feet away from the wall so I can work around it and access my uh, tool cabinets. I also want to point out that I have some machinery in this upper hand tool area, but the machinery is placed in the corners. Smaller machinery, a drill press, a bandsaw, a router table. I have that placed in the corners. I don't use the router table as much or nearly as much as I ever, ever did in the past, but I use the drill press considerably and I use the bandsaw quite a bit. I'll use the bandsaw before I use a table saw. The table saw is at the lower left corner and that's centrally mounted with an outfeed table. I have some task lighting set up at the uh, at the workbench you can see. Another view of the other workbench with the, you can barely see the outfeed table and uh, one of the older workbenches along the wall, but that workbench is well away from the wall, well away from that router station. So it works well, so I can, with a plenty of ambient lighting, so I don't need to turn on any auxiliary or any uh, artificial lights or anything, ceiling lights, when I'm working there. Another view of the uh, table saw, centrally mounted table saw with outfeed table and uh, overhead uh, blade guard, dust collection and that very same uh, workbench. This is an example of workflow where I have my machines against the walls and I have my workbenches away from the walls and uh, the table saw centrally mounted so I can have the, the most possible access around the table saw for larger pieces of wood, uh, sheet goods and that sort of thing. This is the very same workbench I'm standing in front of now. Far less clutter than it is today because <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing this, uh, this lecture, but uh, this is what it normally looks like. So I try to keep it clean at the top and uh, try to put everything, store everything away. And you can see a small six inch jointer in the, uh, against the wall on one side. And that's an example of having machines against the wall. I tend to have all my smaller machines on this, on this level, like against the wall, the periphery. So I free up the central part 
because uh, let's not forget that it's not just workbenches and machinery. When you're creating furniture, you need room to maneuver the furniture around, maneuver especially large case goods, uh, cabinets. So I have a rolling cart, for example. I need plenty of room around the machines to be able to work correctly. This is an example of a uh, good workflow. These are uh, two, uh, one of two earlier workbenches. I, they're maybe 25, 26 years old. I still use them occasionally for some small work or metal work. They're uh, on this level, they're against the wall. At one point, these were my main workbenches and I had them uh, placed together to create a larger work surface, but they, they were far too small for, uh, for anything I do today. Another view of the uh, workshop with the bandsaw in the corner. The strategically place uh, some machines in corners and against walls to free up the, uh, the central part of the workshop. The rolling cart you can see and some, uh, some wall cabinets that I've added over the years. The wall cabinets are uh, strategically located in uh, areas of the wall that I would never normally use. So in this case it's uh, directly behind the bandsaw. So I have plenty of room to work with the bandsaw and it's a space on the wall I would never use for anything else. Something to keep in mind when putting up wall cabinets so they don't interfere with your uh, workflow. Again, you can see the uh, it's a little busier view of the same uh, area with the bandsaw. That same wall cabinet just directly behind the bandsaw and another wall cabinet just above the uh, a 13 inch uh, thickness planer and the, uh, just between two windows. That cabinet above the thickness planer is uh, again strategically placed so that it doesn't interfere with, uh, with the planer but it, it's a wall space that I would never use for anything else so it's ideal for a wall cabinet and it, it, the doors open fine and everything. Another thing to consider if you're building your own workshop is to, to have higher ceilings. I, uh, this is 9 foot ceiling as opposed to 8 feet. I could have gone to 10 but I, 9 was fine so I could so you can move boards around without hitting the ceiling and have the, see, have the lighting very close to the, uh, to the uh, I wouldn't say flush, but uh, just very tight to the ceiling also. The fluorescents you see here are, uh, are set up in banks so I can turn banks of lights on. I intend to upgrade these fluorescents once I run out of uh, some extra fluorescent bulbs I purchased over the years. I will, will be converting them to LED uh, fixtures. And if you're building today, you probably install LED fixtures, fluorescents are totally out. This is the lower part. It looks busy, but it's, uh, it's just a view from the, from the camera, from the image. But it's making uh, the most efficient use of space. So I have two dust collection systems for different uh, sets of machines. And the central dust collector is connected to some um, the machines in the lower level. 15-inch uh, uh, thickness planer and uh, a jointer, a thickness sander. And the, you can see the uh, veneer, veneer station, veneering station with a pump, and I have a sharpening station just directly behind that with an oscillating spindle sander. So everything's strategically placed so I can uh, I can do my rough work, my sharpening, and so I don't I hardly do any hand work in this at this level. And the reason the, <clears throat> the shop set up for, with an upper and a lower level is because uh, at the time it was very expensive to build a workshop. I wasn't in the same financial position I am today. So, I, we, so having a smaller footprint was ideal. So having a shop on two levels with a smaller footprint was the ideal uh, format. The total square footage of the workshop is about 1300 square feet. So you can imagine having 650 square feet on two levels versus a 1300 square foot shop, how much space saving there is. So it's actually taking advantage of a lower part of, uh, of the building we live in also. This is another uh, workbench that I, uh, I built uh, maybe 15 years ago. This is a more uh, rugged, uh, heavy mass workbench with a sliding board jack. I built it with uh, primarily construction lumber and plywood tops, Baltic birch tops, they're just the two tops glued together and a series of bench holes and all that. So this served me well for, uh, for a number of years but I have outgrown this bench also. And, uh, it's very large and it 
I decided to move that from the upper level to the lower level. So I use this as a lower level workbench when I'm working at the lower level and I'm working with some hand tools. It has a metal vise with uh, wooden jaws. So that's something that's really common today in workbenches also. Now my current workbench is at the, at the upper level, but this is, uh, this served well for a number of years. And I developed a, a set of uh, bench aids for this workbench. Another view of that workbench, it's against the wall and there's a, there's a little area to the left of it that has my wood storage and a 15 inch thickness planer just ahead of it and a more industrial uh, wider uh, jointer that's I think nine and a quarter or nine and a half inches wide it's, uh, it's an old uh, older machine from the 1950s that was uh, restored <coughs> somewhat and it worked so it, I use that to uh, prepare some boards and then I break them down in this lower level so I can work I work with them above with the hand tools. This is a sliding miter station. I set this up to break down the boards uh, into manageable pieces so I could uh, work with them by hand. So this is a quick uh, way of doing that. And uh, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to have been a portable station but it's been there. I, I set it up and I have never taken it down because it's so handy. So I have plenty of light, ambient light at this lower level because it's actually a raised uh, lower level. It's above ground by four to five feet. So it works well in my case. Here I am sitting in front of the, the same workbench I'm standing in front of now with the, this, uh, these tool cabinets have been upgraded in the last year and the, uh, the doors are used to store uh, some tools that you can see. Original doors were just uh, doors. So I've, uh, I've done that. It's a little chisel rack there at the, uh, at the, in the tool well. And the reason I use a chisel rack and I don't have them against the walls because I, because I work on two different uh, workbenches, I can, I can transport the, I can move the chisel rack around and uh, to where I'm working. So it's something to keep in mind. I mean, most people don't have the same setup I have with two similar workbenches. This is an adaptation and to increase my workflow to speed things up is to actually be able to move things around between workbenches for me.